How's it going everyone? So beta 3 of iOS 26 is officially released and we have it right here in Apple CarPlay because we are going to go ahead and check out and see what they changed to update the CarPlay side of things. So in case you don't know, along with this update we also received the beta 3 update for tvOS, Apple TV, iPad OS, Vision OS, Mac OS, and HomePod OS. But we're going to go primarily focus on Apple CarPlay. And yes, I'll be sure to include timestamps in the description down below. Didn't mean to activate that. So one thing I immediately noticed after using it now is they did tweak the liquid glass design because as we use, as we transition from one page to the other, it definitely has been enhanced as the transparency between the apps that slides underneath the UI. It's pretty obvious where they improved it. So that's kind of interesting. But in terms of the widget fix, unfortunately, if we go here, we still just have one widget page for some reason. That hasn't been changed because previously we actually had two widgets and this is with the smart zoom setting enabled. If we go into our settings and we go into display, right here you could tell that we do have smart display zoom because previously on beta 1 we did have access to two widgets, not just one. So that's a bit unfortunate that we haven't received that back. But one thing I have noticed is there's more support for more cool third party widgets for Apple CarPlay as here are some that I've seen online recently. So I'm definitely looking forward to testing out some of those newly added ones, but as of right now, nothing has really changed in the widget page. We're still left with one, unfortunately. But one thing that they get tweaked is located on the iPhone side of things. If you go into the wallpaper category, they did add in new wallpapers, like different colors of the iOS 26 wallpaper that we received. But when it comes to watching YouTube videos on the big screen for AirPlay support, unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's been added on beta 3 yet, possibly beta 4 or beta 5 is when we're likely to see this because if I go ahead and launch YouTube, while well, I, I was playing with YouTube earlier, I did not have the option to cast the media that I was watching onto the Apple big screen on my vehicle because CarPlay is selected and it is not streaming media yet. So hopefully again, beta four or beta five will possibly give us finally the ability to do that. But from my understanding, a big one that did get added is the ability to finally be able to pinch and zoom by just using your two fingers like you see me do right here. This is more compatible on more vehicles to my knowledge, but a massive missed opportunity that I experienced on, on beta two is whenever you set directions and you need to zoom out, it still is not letting us do that. We still have to rely on the plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out, unfortunately. And another thing I noticed is the liquid glass effect doesn't transition to Apple Maps yet, like it did on the home menu, like on this page, as you can see. It even illuminates like the edges. Apple Maps doesn't yet do that, it seems like, but possibly Apple will do that in the near future. But one thing I know for sure is that zoom functionality, because I have seen some people in the comments just saying they don't have this ability on their vehicle. Beta 3 should unlock it for more on more automakers. And then addressing a comment that I did see on beta 2 update when I covered Apple CarPlay was these crash reports. Somebody stated that these newly added ones were always available on beta 1. Well, for some reason it wasn't available for me, but it was available on the iPhone now. New reports have been added on Apple CarPlay on Apple Maps. So now we actually have road work, hazard, and road closures. And for my first-hand experience, this was added on beta 2, not beta 1, for Apple Maps on Apple CarPlay. And just real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds, hit that like button, like, truly appreciate those because so strongly support the channel and allows the channel to be driven by you guys, the viewers, not third-party brands, to take up like a minute or two off your time to tell you to subscribe to some type of VPN. So thank you so much for continuing supporting the channel and allowing this channel to be brand free driven. Let's carry on. And then addressing another comment I've seen is uh, how do you take screenshots on Apple Maps? You see, you can still take a screenshot by just simply hitting the screenshot button on your iPhone and it'll take a screenshot of Apple CarPlay as well as your main screen phone. But unfortunately with Apple on iOS 26, you need to manually enable this functionality. You see, if we grab our device and we head into our settings, in the main page, scroll down to general and then select the screen capture tab. From here, you have more settings for your screenshots. You can now convert from SDR to HDR if you need to. 
but on where it says CarPlay screenshots, you need to make sure it's enabled and now you could capture screenshots on the Apple CarPlay. That's a new setting that was added on iOS 26. Be by default, that screenshot tab never existed, nor did you have the ability to disable screenshots for a CarPlay. And then on Apple Music, one thing I did notice is on Apple Music, everything is still the same, but if you go to your library section, you now have a new downloaded tab where you could categorize from all the download playlists, artists, albums, or songs you natively download on your iPhone. So that's a new little given tool that they gave us, but everything here pretty much remained the same ever since iOS 26, including the radios tab. And I already checked podcasts as well. Podcasts remain the exact same. We still have the control speed ability, but no drop down menu to select between 0.8 to like times two. But it does give us the icons which one of these podcasts are downloaded and which ones can be downloaded. As well as you have the ability to browse between top shows and such. And I also noticed if you launch the phone app, there's actually a weird animation now whenever you launch it. Something interesting I just now noticed. And then in the contact tab, you have the new tab UI that says ask Siri to make a call. Instead of locate somebody in your long list of, of contacts you have in your phone book. And then additionally, an app that did receive a massive overhaul is the calendar app. It no longer lists the exact date number that we are in. So right now it just says calendar and there's no number telling us the current date. Not sure if Apple is going to reverse back to it because that was, that was a nice little feature because that will actually tell you the date that it was today. But now it just gives us a generic calendar icon, unfortunately. But when it comes to replying to text messages with quick reactions, that still remained the same. And when you're receiving an incoming call, it doesn't take up the entire space of your UI still. But if you like to reverse back to the full page, you can always just tap on this section of the screen. It'll take you back to the original display that we are known and used to. There's also a new menu that allows you to do a quick respond in case you're unable to answer the call and just text them. From previous generation OS updates, and then another noticeable subtle change is the new screen splash screen update that Apple introduced whenever your phone connects to Apple CarPlay. Back then, these icons were a little bit different from beta one and beta two. It looks like they fine tweaked it again. When it comes to compatible devices, you are required to have an iPhone that can support iOS 26. As Apple dropped support for the iPhone 10s as well as the 10s Max, but so long as you have an iPhone 11 or newer, you're perfectly fine. Your device will be compatible for this future firmware update. In addition to that, as time making this video, we are currently on beta one on the developer beta, which is available to all developer accounts. But the public beta will be released sometime in July. And then the official release for this OS will be sometime during the fall time. It's typically around the launch of the new iPhones. But there you guys have it. That is everything new on CarPlay side of things when it comes to Beta 3. Let me know in the comments if you've seen something cool that you'd like to share with everybody else. But unfortunately, we have not yet received the ability to actually watch our YouTube videos on our vehicle's display without having to upgrade the car entirely. Anyways, if you wish to watch more, highly recommend checking out that video over there where I highlight everything new for TVOS 26. Thank you so much for watching.